today on the CTV News at 5, why fire investigators believe spontaneous combustion is behind a devastating city blaze. Plus, a trial data set for a Claire's home man in the gruesome murder of a Vulcan senior. And some of the best young scientists in the country present their work at the National Science Fair. CTV News with Jackie Scandlebury. Good afternoon. The spontaneous combustion of oily rags is being blamed for a fire that destroyed two city homes and caused over a million dollars in damage yesterday in Paradise Canyon. Fire crews remain on the scene today, making sure there were no flare-ups under today's windy conditions. The blaze broke out just afternoon on Sunday. Flames caught on the outside of one house and then were spread to the second home by a swirling wind in the space between the two buildings. No one was home at the time. There were no injuries. Investigators say it appears the fire was started by a combination of organic material and oily rags placed in a garbage bin. It was uh, oily rags that they were using to soak up the uh, extra excess oil and uh, combination of the oil with the combustible material itself it was contained in the uh, garbage can on the west side and uh, with the garbage can being uh, contained the heat built itself up and with oxidized through oxidization created enough heat and it got the material to its ignition temperature. One of the homes destroyed in the fire was a former Stars Air Ambulance show home. The other was owned by a couple that had just moved in a few weeks ago. Neighbors did manage to rescue two restored vehicles that had been parked in the garage, but the fire spread so quickly there was little else they could do. Brendan Miller reports. Witnesses say by the time they saw the flames, it was too late to save the homes. You could hear grass, glass breaking and cracking and you could feel the heat from the fire on the driveways. Uh, then the second house caught fire and that's when the fire crew got here. The good news, say fire crews, nobody was home in either house when the fire broke out. The bad news, there wasn't a chance to save the buildings. Due to prevailing winds, uh, our crews were unable to uh, salvage the structures, so we quickly went to a defensive mode once we determined there was no occupants in the buildings. People living in the West Lethbridge neighborhood poured out of their homes as the fire grew, pitching in to help. You couldn't see a whole lot. It was all full of smoke. It was couldn't see nothing at all. I was told that my neighbors came out over here and they helped with the garden hoses for a while to help keep the fire at bay until the fire department came. It was really hectic. They had, they were getting the hoses out and like the whole time the windows were exploding and. Um, smoke, there was a lot of black smoke coming up. Once it became clear nobody was in danger, neighbors tried to salvage what they could before the flames spread further. Inside the garage of one of the burning homes were three classic cars. They couldn't find the keys so they just put the cars in neutral and rolled them out. And uh, two of them. And then there was still one in the back. Brendan Miller, CTV News, Lethbridge. The warm, windy weather is now pushing the fire hazard to extreme levels in some parts of the province. This morning, the city of Lethbridge placed a fire ban on all open fires in the River Valley. The ban does not include private fire pits or the fire pits at the Bridgeview RV Resort. Also excluded, we have the stoves at the John Martin Center, as well as the, Elks, uh, the fire pit at the Elks Recreation Compound and the picnic shelter at Popson Park. Cypress County, which surrounds the Medicine Hat area, has also imposed a level one fire ban there. A couple of out-of-control wildfires have forced 150 people from their homes in two separate Alberta communities. Residents in the hamlet of Nordegg were given an evacuation order as a wildfire moved dangerously close to that community. In, Dod in Lodgepole, a 1,300-hectare wildfire is also burning out of control. That one, too, has forced residents from their homes, and that evacuation alert will last for at least the next 48 hours. There are now 28 wildfires burning in Alberta. Despite all the talk about these warmer conditions, we're going to be heading back to more seasonal temperatures, Dory. Yeah, and, and you just mentioned the wildfire situation, and certainly those winds haven't helped. We're right under the jet stream. But the good news, is, if you balance that with the bad news of the windy conditions, is that there is pockets of moisture that are moving across. So that will help some of those areas. But the winds are still going to be with us tonight and again tomorrow. And as you said, we get back down to more average temperatures. Not 
deep freeze temperatures, just average temperatures. So it's all good. I'll tell you about it in a couple of minutes. Sounds good. Thanks, Dory. A four-week trial has been set for a Clarisho man charged in the gruesome murder of a Vulcan senior. 36-year-old Timmy Engel is charged with first-degree murder and indignity to a human body in the death of 77-year-old Otto Bunty Luce. Luce disappeared in January of last year and after RCMP say someone tried to access his bank account. Then a few days later, his dismembered body was found near Claire's home. Engel has chosen to be tried by judge and jury. The trial will start October the 6th of 2014. And two Lethbridge men charged with murder will stand trial next February. The body of 58-year-old George Spann was discovered in his Northside home in January. Police say that he'd been stabbed to death. The death is believed to be drug-related. 37-year-old Michael Mitchell and 21-year-old Addison Wakefield are each charged with second-degree murder. They have elected to be tried by judge and jury. That will happen February 24th of 2014. A Mexican man accused of shooting and killing a Shaughnessy man in 2010 will stand trial next year for second-degree murder. A three-week trial has been set aside for Luis Ochoa Gomez. He's charged in connection to the death of Moro Hernandez Renteria in October of 2010. Ochoa Gomez has been in custody since August of 2011 when he was arrested in the U.S. and then extradited back to Canada. The trial by judge and jury is set for June of 2014. Remember that huge fire that destroyed Lethbridge's Van Harlem apartment building complex back in February? Well, now a second person has pleaded guilty to arson in the blaze. The fire destroyed the historic Van Harlem building on February the 1st. 25 people were living there at the time. One man suffered a broken leg while jumping from a window to escape the fire. Crystal Joyce Mills told court that she intentionally set fire to the building after an argument with a resident. She has been handed a three-year sentence for arson, plus three months on a previous mischief charge. Then today, 25-year-old Sheila Crow Eagle pleaded guilty to arson with disregard for human life in the case. She will be sentenced later this summer. A Cranbrook woman originally charged with murder pleaded guilty today to criminal negligence causing death. 29-year-old Tammy Bouvette's charges stem from the drowning death of a toddler that she was babysitting in May of 2011. 911 responded to a call that 19-month-old Iana Teeple was found face down in the bathtub and was unresponsive. She died in Calgary Children's Hospital the next day. An autopsy revealed injuries to the child's head and mouth. The Crown told court it can't prove that Bouvette caused the injuries or the death, but there is no doubt she left an injured, bleeding, distraught child alone in the bathtub for three to five minutes. Yana Teeple's parents were not in the courtroom today. A sentencing date is still being determined. The family of a former NHL enforcer and Medicine Hat Tiger, Derek Bogart, has filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the league. Bogart suffered a brain damage caused by repeated blows to the head. The 28-year-old Saskatchewan native died in May of 2011 from an accidental overdose of pain medication and alcohol. Autopsy results show that he suffered from a degenerative brain disorder caused by repeated hits to the head. Bogart's family accuses the NHL of giving him excessive amounts of painkillers during his career and then failing to cure the addiction that followed. Bougard was signed by the New York Rangers at the time of his death. He played for the Medicine Hat Tigers for parts of both the 2001, 2002 and part of 2003 season. Well, the province is preparing to legislate its deal with Alberta teachers as the battle with school boards across Alberta gets nasty. Education Minister Jeff Johnson says he will introduce Bill 26 to force the deal into place. 3 o'clock today was the deadline for the province to all 62 Alberta school boards and teachers association locals to support the agreement. At least six school boards are still refusing. Alberta pharmacists have presented the provincial government with a petition asking Health Minister Fred Horn to go back to the drawing table and come up with a new prescription drug pricing plan. The Wild Rose Party joined the pharmacists at the Alberta Legislature today. The government has come up with a plan to cut generic drug spending in half, saving about $80 million for the province, but critics say it would substantially affect the income of smaller pharmacies and possibly make it harder to get some doses or kinds of drugs. About 25,000 Albertans have signed the petition. Pharmacists are hoping that it prompts the government to sit down and negotiate a new plan. We don't know that we've had any progress. We're really just hoping that this sends a message that the patients and the, the public of Alberta would like the government to work with the pharmacists to ensure their care stays the same and doesn't decline. We're just you know, worried about the impact on patient health. 
Pharmacists say some pharmacies have already shortened hours or laid off staff. They warn there will be less time for one-on-one -on -one care and to ensure patients are getting the proper medication. Well, the next world-renowned scientist could very well be in Lethbridge today. The university hosted 400 of the country's top young minds from Nunavut to Vancouver Island and some even from down under. These Australian high school students are the top contenders in their home country and they jumped at the chance to attend the 52nd annual Canada-wide high school science fair at the U L. The country's top grade 7 to 12 student projects are being showcased in the fair and before the end of the week an additional 3,000 students from across southern Alberta and BC will travel to check out the action here. It's the first time the university has hosted the event. It has been really exciting to have them here. The kids are a blast. They know so much about science. It's crazy that at such a young age that they can kind of out-talk me, master students. Now the next public viewing is Thursday morning and the awards will be presented Thursday afternoon at the NMAX Center. And if that wasn't enough inspiration, students today got the chance to meet a young Canadian who turned his grade 12 science project from six years ago into a living. This is Ben Gluck and his invention, an environmentally friendly electric motorcycle called the UNO. It produces no emissions and was named the invention of the year in 2008 by Popular Science magazine. His machine also got him a one and a quarter million dollar deal on the Dragon's Den TV series. He now owns his own company. The 24 year old has been involved with science fairs since the age of 13 and hopes to inspire kids to pursue their dreams. We need kids to get excited about science and get it more and have more kids looking at it as a career choice because it's the innovative ideas that the kids are doing now that are going to end up changing the world one day and the world's such a messed up place we need innovative people thinking about these problems and you know we should get them started early. Well, there's just over 100 days each year that are actually ideal for getting behind the wheel of a motorcycle and bikers in southern Alberta are hoping to safely make the most of them. There's a sound you should get used to over the next couple of months. There are also a warning sign, say bikers, that they're back on the road. The 29th Annual Motorcycle Awareness Parade led bikers across the city, complete with police escort. It's one way they hope to remind drivers to take an extra shoulder check. And this year's parade was dedicated to a good friend, Jeff Rahala, who died in a motorcycle crash. It was a marriage of thunderous rhythms and exciting choreography. The Lethbridge Community Taiko Association held its annual gala over the weekend. Since 2007, the group has grown from a group of seven to nearly 40 members, a clear indication of the growing popularity of the sound of taiko drums. The event showcased both traditional and contemporary music. Time now to check out how the markets kicked off the week. When we come back, Dory's got more on those seasonal temperatures.